So blepharoplasty is a subject I love talking about because it's probably the most common surgery I do. But before I tell you about the surgery, let me tell you about what we're trying to accomplish and that means giving you an understanding of how eyelids age. So in youth, eyelids are full, without shadows, without any contour issues, the skin is smooth without wrinkles, and it has that youthful look. As we age, the, aesthetic change, the aesthetics change tremendously. Eyelids become saggy with excess tissue, loss of volume, or what we call deflation, so there are hollows, dark circles, etc. The goal of good surgery is to recreate youth. And the way you achieve that is by looking at pictures of individuals or patients when they were younger. Let me expand on that. This is really important. Traditionally, blepharoplasty surgery was what I call subtractive or excisional. We would cut tissue out. The thought was the tissue, such as skin and fat, loosens, stretches, and sags. So cut it out. What we ended up doing was actually aging patients. If you look at someone as they get older, we're all basically grapes that turn into raisins. We shrink and we wrinkle. The best way to make a raisin a grape is to blow it up, not to tighten it so it looks like a shriveled up grape. We have learned over the last 15 years that that's done by augmenting tissue. Sure, we cut out what's extra, but sometimes we take the fat in the eyelids and we preserve it by moving it around. Sometimes we take fat from the belly or the thigh and inject it around the eyelids so they become full like they are in youth. So it's really important for patients to be aware of what they're getting into when they have blepharoplasty or cosmetic eyelid surgery. What they need to understand is that it is a true surgical procedure. It can be done under straight local anesthesia. That means they're wide awake with some numbing shots and many patients prefer this. It can also be done under sedation where by IV they get a little bit of medication to make them comfortable. Very much like a colonoscopy is performed. I say colonoscopy because that's one of the most common procedures performed in the country and patients usually understand that. Finally, for those that are nervous, or concerned about not being completely out for surgery, or for those that are having more significant procedures added on, such as body work or other facial work, they can be under general anesthesia, and that means that they are put to sleep and monitored the whole time. There is this feeling that general anesthesia can be unsafe. While you are put under deeper anesthesia, you're monitored so closely that in many ways, it may be a safer way to do surgery. Once anesthesia issues are covered, the next most important thing to understand is you're going to have bruising and swelling after surgery and sometimes the eyelid will, the eyelids will swell shut. It's a possibility. That's a normal part of surgery and a normal part of healing. The patient's best friend after surgery is ice. The reason is for the first two days after surgery, the ice causes the blood vessels to close off and not leak any more fluid and it helps with the recovery from swelling. Oftentimes an ointment is put over the stitches and drops are put into the eye. Let me talk about the stitches. To do upper eyelid surgery, you have to have an incision in the natural eyelid crease to remove the extra skin. People ask me, I'm concerned, I'm going to have a scar, that'll look strange. We all have a crease. Good surgery places the incision in the crease so no new line is created and it's paper thin. Now while you may notice it when you close your eyes and inspect it closely for the first four to six months after surgery, afterwards you, know, you won't and makeup covers it easily. In the lower lid, in many cases, the incision and the surgery is done from inside the eyelid so no external incisions or scars develop. Again, this is why it's important to see an experienced eyelid surgeon who really knows the best way to camouflage and mask all the incisions. So I think if you're gonna have blepharoplasty surgery, you gotta give yourself at least a month where you have no major events. Typically, most of the swelling and bruising, if it's only the upper lids, is mostly gone visibly within two weeks, but it can take two, three months. Sometimes you wake up in the morning and you're more swollen and as the day goes on. That's because when you're standing up during the day, the fluid goes towards your feet because of gravity. When you add lower lid surgery, especially when you're moving around fat or injecting fat, it can be much longer. It may be three months before really all the bruising and swelling is gone. I generally tell patients, do you have any major events coming up? 
And if the answer is yes, we usually wait till after them, or we give at least three months before the major event. It's important that there's no exercise, heavy exercise, for at least two weeks after the procedure. We avoid saunas for the first two weeks after the procedures or going in the ocean. Um, you're able to shower after surgery within a day as long as you keep the area not too moist. Sometimes baths are preferred. But most people within a month after surgery are back to all activities that they want to be involved in.